Greg Daniel is a legendary actor and director, with over 100 credits to his name in TV and film. He talks to me today about his career and his brand new movie, Seventh and Union. Mr Daniel, thank you so much for joining me today. Now, you have a very impressive resume, so I'd like to start by asking, how did you get started in this business? You know, it's interesting you should say that because it was language that got me started because my father uh, was a, a British, it was an island that was ruled on by the British. She was a colony for a while. And we would have these amazing books uh, at home where I was growing up. My father was Caribbean, my mother was uh, uh, American. But because of the British rule over the nation, uh, we had a lot of volumes of Shakespeare and things around, we did. And so I would read them. I had no idea what they were saying, but I fell in love with the musicality of the language. I truly did. There was something about language that I just loved. <laughs> and when I finally did see a classical uh, performance of a play, I was hooked. I just thought, wow, I was mesmerized. I just, I, I would love to do that. My God, the costumes, the lighting, these people are sounding and talking in strange ways. It was really the music of language. Language mm -hmm. is so powerful. And the way it was being used in Shakespeare became a favorite of mine. So I think my entrance into acting really was language, really learning to love uh, and hearing language. And the thought that I could tell a story uh, mm -hmm. through by using language was just magnificent for me, really magnificent for me. So that's how I, uh, that's how I started. Then I studied and I, I stayed with it, then I studied. And then uh, I've been lucky enough to have a career now uh, for a couple of decades as an actor. At the beginning of your career, was there ever a moment that you may have thought that being an African-American man could hinder your chances of getting opportunities in the business? Well, you know, I had actors like Sidney Poitier and, and, and Harry Lepo. I mean, there were actors that were on the stage at the time, particularly of Sidney Poitier, that mm -hmm. really inspired me. I mean, I saw this dark black man speaking so elegantly <laughs> and acting. If anything, it encouraged me that I could do it. So I did actually stand on the shoulders of giants of people who came before, who broke their way through. And I'm sure we have it so much easier those the, the stars of the day uh seeing them uh, in, in feature films was just so inspiring dorothy dandridge and uh, oh my god harry belafonte these were all people who were doing films as i was growing up so that actually inspired me because i think well if he could do it if he can do it then i can do it and then of course you, you hit the real world but the fact that there was a generation before me who were making strides and breaking through with all the difficulties of bigotry and racism that they face, mm. if anything, they made it easier for me. It made it easier for my resolve that I could do it. Now, you have a new movie coming out called Seventh and Union. So I'd like to ask how you got involved with this project. Um, I auditioned. I was sent a script. I liked it. Uh, so I had my manager set up an audition for it. I met the director. I met the uh, writer. I had one audition. But I, so I, I met them the second time around. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 it turns out I knew the writer from years, years ago. I didn't even remember, but I knew the writer from a different circumstance. So I auditioned for them. They liked the work I did. I think what's special about the project is because you have a Latinx gentleman, a, a Mexican and a Black African-American coming together in the film to sort of respect each other and lean on each other. And we very rarely see lean with Black and Brown together. So I thought that was really important that the industry got to see these black and brown. And both of them are disenchanted. Both of them are sort of at the end of the line in terms of hope. And then they find in each other, they're a generation apart. I mean, the younger Mexican boxer is much younger than I am. But in each other, they find this hope and this renewal and this way to support each other that suddenly rekindles what they their passions in life. I mean, it's... It, it's you know, there's a lot of boxing in the movie. We have mm. some fantastic boxing scenes, but it's not about the boxing, mm. though people will enjoy the boxing very much. It's really about the friendship between these two men and how they find in each other hope, reconciliation, uh, an opportunity to maybe move beyond the circumstances they are now. And that's very, that's very powerful, I think, particularly with the racial strife that we have in America and around the world right now. To see a black and brown of different generations actually form a bond to help out each other. I think that was powerful. I think it's a, it's a powerful message it sends. Um, it sends a powerful message. The fact that we really did, uh, we really do help each other. That's the core of the film. The core of the film is our relationship. So that's important. So I, I was very pleased to do that. We were one of the first um, 
films last summer that was that that was okay to start to shoot because COVID had with us last summer. Uh, nothing was shooting, but then we, they came up with a series of protocols and guidelines to keep everyone safe. So we were one of the first films to get greenlit to go ahead and shoot under the new COVID procedures and protocols. So it was a uh, it was a wonderful time. I had a wonderful time shooting it. Omar Chaparro is the other gentleman to co-star with me, I and mean, equal. And I loved working with him. Loved working with him as well as our director. And how has the reception been so far for the movie? It was a packed house. People love the film, which is always a great thing. I mean, it, it gives you hope that when it's released nationwide, that, um, you know, it'll do well. I was very, very pleased, the director, the screenwriter, we were all very pleased with the reception we got last night. Yeah. And we opened the festival. The festival was a week long, so we opened it. So it was nice to be the anchor, the anchor of the, uh, of the entire festival. So do you feel that the Black Lives Matter movement has made a change in the Hollywood industry, if, for example, diversity with characters now? Well, what's changing is the industry was because of 2020. I mean, because of Black Lives mm. Matter, suddenly, you know, everyone's looking at white supremacy and white privilege in a very mm -hmm. different way. And mm -hmm. companies are making a concerted effort now to increase equity, diversity, and inclusion. And that's happening in Hollywood as well. It's yes. happening in Hollywood as well. I mean, the message yes. is sort of out. You, one has to not just be performative, but one has to institute real systemic change. Mm -hmm. And I think that's not just the entertainment industry, but our many industries now are going, okay, so are we part of the uh, problem? Are we part of the, mm -hmm. Do we want to be part of the solution or part of the problem? So there is this fervor now since last year after mm -hmm. the murder of George Floyd, mm -hmm. the companies are really diving into equity, diversity, and inclusion, and really a chance to stop this white supremacy and white power that sort of, even if it's quiet, has ruled so much of our relation, racial relationships. You've achieved so much in your career. You've, you've even worked with Miss Oprah Winfrey. Um, well, so first of all, what was that like, working with Oprah? And do you think that there's anything left more for you to do that you haven't done yet? Oprah was lovely to work with. She was terrific. She was a hard worker. I mean, people don't mm. see how much work she puts in because uh, she wanted to do it and she wanted to get it right and find something. It wasn't like she was skating about it. No, she was there to work. So, I, you know, again, any successful, particularly a BIPOC individual, a Black Indigenous person of color, I mean, mm. she got there because of hard work. So I just look at that and, and then go, yeah, I might have reached a pinnacle in terms of working with, but I mm. still need to not only keep that, but also mm. help others. There mm. are those in generations after me, young mm. brothers and sisters who want to act and direct and produce and to write, that if I can help them in some way. So my responsibility, having made it this far, is also mm. to reach back and see if I can bring someone else who male or female, BIPOC who also wants this, who has a dream like mine. So I still have a lot to do. <laughs> do you have any advice for people who are looking to get into the acting industry? Sure, surround yourself with people who believe in you and who are a support mm -hmm. system. It's, you can't do it alone. So you need people around you. They don't have to be actors. The support system, whether it's a brother, sister, friends, close friends, you need people around you who believe in you and support you. Mm -hmm. Number two, study your craft. Realize mm. that acting is a craft. It's not just jumping in front of a camera or on a mm. stage and just speak it. You have to really study. So study your craft. Mm. And number three, don't be deterred by anything. You know, don't be, all challenges are a, a chance to let you grow. So if you smack up against the wall this time, keep going. It really is, it sounds cliche, but don't give up. Do not give up. So surround yourself with people who can be a support system, mm -hmm. earn your craft and what you're doing. And then third, just refuse to give up. Totally refuse to give up. It'll happen. It'll happen for you. If you could pick one word to describe how you feel today, what word would that be? Oh, today I'm, <laughs> I'm inspired. After seeing the film last night, and I'm about to go into a rehearsal now on a mm -hmm. stage play. I'm about to leave and go to rehearsal. I'm just, oh, two words, okay. Grateful and inspired. Those grateful and expired. Good That's question. It. I feel grateful today and inspired. I do. I really do. I'm very blessed that way. So blessed. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Greg Daniels. Thank you.
It was my pleasure, really. It was really my pleasure. It was very easy to talk to you. And like I say, you stay at it because it's important. It's important. Each one, teach one. So stay at it, please.